Alright guys, welcome to the 15th episode of Below the Bar. In this episode, expect to find out why coffee is better than tea, what buying a blue tick says about your insecurities, and how football chant nearly got me beaten up in Iron Apple. Let's get into it. And we're back, Q&A episode thrown together. Yeah, a little bit ad hoc this week, but it's good because we haven't seen any of the questions, so this is quite off the cuff. This so. is the least prepared podcast we've ever done. Yes, so strap yourselves in. And we've just spent two hours sat inside doing admin. Yeah, so... So this could go <laughs> pretty rogue quite quickly. Very, but, very true. Yeah, we, that's not on brand for us. We usually like walk or get outside before these yeah. podcasts. So I've got, a lot spent... of pe- I've got a lot of pent-up energy, but I've got to sit here and talk. Yeah. So that's just going to get exercised through my words, effectively. Yeah, and hopefully you can enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, we've got to go through Helmet of the Week, so play the jingle now. Helmet of the Week. Yes. Right, so this week's Helmet of the Week is... Blue tick hats. Well, (laughs) specifically people that have now decided that they want to pay for a blue tick. Well, yeah, this is where the hat comes in. Unwarranted blue ticks. Yeah, there we go, yeah. So I'm sure you would all have seen this. Instagram released an initiative probably a month ago, maybe six weeks ago, where you can now pay to have one of those legitimate blue ticks on your profile which means well first of all that that accolade, well, it mean, no, it mean, accolade it, is now meaningless well it means nothing well yeah exactly. that's the crux of it isn't yeah, it? yeah yeah it's it's made people have earned a blue tick obsolete obsolete and it's made people that have paid for a blue tick a hat yeah well exactly and if <laughs> so you have no, no one's tick, winning it then you you're a helmet because well i don't get the the rationale behind it because I, I get i see a lot of people who spend half my life on instagram so i see a lot of people who have a blue tick? I'm like, oh, who's it? Who's that? I might have heard of him. <laughs> Come on, his profile, right? You know, 852 followers. I'm like, ah, really? <laughs> What's you know? Because the blue tick, but effectively, what it's there for is to show people that this is the original account, and that's only useful if there's always like fake accounts popping up. You know, for like James Smith or whatever, who's getting like loads of fake accounts coming through. Yeah. Then the blue tick tells people that's the legitimate James Smith. But for like Joe Bloggs, who's got fucking eight followers and 52 posts, right? What? What's he gaining from a blue tick? Well, fuck all. Well, exactly. He's just losing but 12 pounds. But like, surely, like, Meta or Elon Musk, mm. whoever's doing it, well, they're both doing it, aren't they? Yeah. Surely they've just shot themselves in the foot because it's only going to piss off notable people on their platform. I guess so. For the sake of appeasing, effectively, like, bots and nobodies. Well, yeah, but it was um, it was a massive win for them financially. Yeah, short term. Yeah. But long, long term, it's just going to fucking piss people off. Well, because they probably knew that a lot of people were going to chase this, like, but is the, is fake the, status. Has the bubble not already burst with it, though? Because I feel like the people that were going to do it already have. Yeah, true. Because I feel like it's quite... This is short-lived. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, lot, it's a bit of like rev- lot of revenue short-lived. I feel like you're not going to win people over. Some People aren't going to suddenly wake up after a month and think, oh, fancy a blue tick now. No. I feel like we're very like one side of the fence with it. But it's a subscription model, right? So it's, this is the genius. So you don't just pay for it. You you get whatever it was, like 600 million people paying for it, but they're paying monthly, right? So they've, they've bulletproofed themselves there. So from a business perspective, it's genius. But it's leveraging on people's in- insecurity, basically. Well, as does most things in... It's well, yeah, but it's the capitalist society. That we but this is like terrible for it, isn't it? Because it's it's completely uh, it's vacuous as, as a as a gesture. Like there's no, like I said, there's no real tangible benefit to having a blue tick unless you unless you're someone of note. Do you reckon further down the line they'll kind of evolve this slightly so that like people of actual notoriety have a different coloured tick? Maybe, but that then that. Then no one will pay for it because there's no point. It's got to True. blend in, hasn't it? But it? I just don't see the point in this, right? Because you're going to fool someone for the best part of 10 seconds. Because well, as exactly. soon as they click onto your profile and they realise you're fucking useless and worthless, well, you actually the go, bubbles burst. You go it? below like normal person on Instagram. Yeah. You know, when someone realises you've actually paid for this blue tick, you go like, your brand value drops. It's like, not only do they like, not have any opinion on you, they actually have a negative opinion on you. Exactly, yeah. Or I certainly do anyway. Um, And I actually saw, so I went in my profile and sometimes it has that drop down thing at the top where it shows you shit you can do, like put yourself yourself on the shop or whatever. It said, 
your account can get verified. And I was like, oh, fucking hell, sick. I've oh, it's, earned a, tra- verif- it's a trap, I've isn't I've earned it? verification. They go, yeah, yeah, sound. And then it clicked through, clicked through a few slides. It goes, yeah, £11.99 a month. I was like, right, Th- that's ridiculous. Yeah. Because um, I thought I'd earned it, lad. It, 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 no. This but no. d- certainly attracts a certain type of subpar male individual, isn't it? Really, it feeds into it that whole... Be. I wonder what the stats are, actually. That'd be interesting. In terms it's of male, female. Not just male, female. Like... Fucking normal functioning blokes, like cripplingly insecure blokes. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is, I feel like a lot of people are quietly insecure, and this this kind of like, you know, easy, easy status is, is something they they'll just grab at because they've priced it such in such a way where it's like easy easy accessible. Twelve pound a month, people are like yeah, fuck it, I'll pay that. Just, just can't. But it's just around. mental. Why you would do it? this? I can't even make it humorous because it's just so sad. <laughs> it's just stupid. Yeah. Like if you've got certainly as well, if you've got like nothing to sell, I've seen people. So if you've got a business account, then maybe you can see the kind of rationale where you want to be viewed as like a an authority in the industry. So you you know you pay yeah. for this blue tick and then then you're viewed as that. That I can kind of see even if you've got a small following, maybe. But if you're like just someone who's posting, you know, like on your private account, like yeah. just, if you did that on your private, which people do. If you're just posting like holiday pics every three months or whatever, what's the fucking point? It's just like it's like someone that like boasts how many women they've slept with, but they're also like completely open about how the only women they sleep with are prostitutes. <laughs> so true. That's a great analogy. Yeah, yeah. Because they're pay, paying for paying to play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can't be. So you kind of just shot yourself in the foot there. Well, I have not because we're just going around in circles now. I have nothing else to add other than these people are helmets. Yeah. Well, that's why they've made. And they need to, they to look, need to have a long, hard look in the mirror at themselves. Yeah, and and stop paying twelve pound ninety nine a month. Because right, if you save a little bit of that up, you can buy an online therapist. Yeah, twelve ninety nine a month. Better help, mate. Is that how, much is? Is, how much is a better help subscription? Because that I, I would argue that for that kind of individual, they're much better channeling their what? financial resources into therapy what you do than they a, are a blue tick. As an initiative, right. When someone clicks that blue tick button, it should take them, divert them to automatically divert them to better help. Yeah. To better help. Yeah. Yeah. So they think they're getting a blue tick and they're actually getting a therapist. Um, yeah, that's that, that's that's that rounded up. Cause I'm sure you can all agree that they've made Helmet of the Week pretty easily there. Because, I mean, I, I've got no respect for someone who does that. Yeah. So we'll leave that there. We'll leave that there. Right. So we're going to go straight into. How are we going to divvy this up? Uh, I don't know. Do you want to do, do it? Do you want to fire first? I'll fire first if you want. Um, okay, so basically how this has worked is we put a and a on my Instagram, on Eddie's Instagram, and on the Brummy Brothers Instagram. And so from all of those places, we're going to draw questions. At random. There are no hard and fast rules here. Do you want to go in order? Do you want to... Cause it... Just mix... Well, whatever. Just mix it up. Follow them at me. Okay, I'm going to try... So, obviously some of mine are about the Marines. I'm going to repackage them about something that's kind of right okay right. fair enough yeah okay most um, of your questions about the marines yeah I, I, I did actually ask for non-fitness related yeah, questions people didn't get the gist people didn't really get the gist no, no. Well. Uh, so I'll start with a semi mm, nah okay five from the hip I don't know if hip. you've got any, any any of those right we'll, we'll do it uh, <laughs> someone's, someone's asked alright I'll say in a minute <laughs> okay so worst or funniest injuries you've dealt with Injuries, yeah. Well, that I've had, yeah, personally, Dealt with. so yeah, I guess have. overcome. Mm. I had a ghost lump on my cock once, did you on the base of my penis? Didn't know that. Yeah, that's that's not an injury, but okay. So, so well, talk, I still went to the doctor that. about it. The foot, well, the actual it was actually deeply traumatizing, but <laughs> well, looking back, but it, <laughs> it's made look, a great podcast story, so yeah, it yeah, has perfect. Uh, apparently, <laughs> <laughs> go on, I throw myself under the bus, yeah, yeah go on. Uh, Oh. It it came about from uh, it, apparently it's like uh, I don't know how to label this, like like a trauma injury. Too much shagging. <laughs> yeah. Like a friction burn. <laughs> yeah. It's like the the, <laughs> the penis hell. equivalent of a friction burn. Jesus. I won't, you, I won't say who win. <laughs> I won't say who win. I, I think I can guess. Uh, so yeah. Fucking hell. So what I so, felt. So did you think it was like? Testy cancer or something? No, because it's not on my testicle. Right. But I thought it was like the shaft equivalent of testicular cancer. Is that a thing? I don't know. But I bet you, but thought, I bet you thought it was a I thing. Always, I, I just had... In my mind, I just had cock, lump, cancer. Yeah. Like well, they can't... yeah. And I bet you Googled it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And, I Googled, <laughs> and I Googled it. It turns out I'd actually been dead for three weeks. <laughs> yeah, so what did the doctor say when you went to there? 
Go on. Well, the, 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 so like this happened. I discovered this lump mm. while I was pissing in a horse and jockey. Right. Right. I, could, I, could, I remember it distinctly. Yeah, yeah. So like the following morning, I rang up to go to the doctors. Uh, on Elvis, that's calling sick. Mm. So that was an awkward conversation <laughs> v- via Teams. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even ring. Couldn't even face the actual <laughs> video off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 not even a call. Oh, it was, it was, it was a text. Okay, it was a text cool. message. Yeah, yeah, okay. Never, never have I ever before, or will I ever again? Right, I have a lump on my penis. <laughs> we on, hope anyway. on Microsoft Teams to my boss. Yeah, uh, what was that? What was that met with? So, sympathy, empathy. Uh, I mean, well, you can't really object to that, can you? It's not. <laughs> no, like, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can I have some proof, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Uh, that's mad. I, didn't, I, didn't, I never knew that. Um, but the, well, so, the thing is, you don't know about it because it was nothing. No, so how like, long did it last? Like a few weeks. It oh, okay. just went away it just by went itself. Away. Yeah. Was it painful? No. No. It was literally, it was like the, it was like, like a bruise. It, no, it was like a, it was like a callus. Oh shit! Okay. So you've been doing that much shaggy. Yeah. I've got, got, oh, yeah. I'm that much of a Lothario. I actually get <laughs> I actually get shaft calluses. <laughs> That's amazing. I've got, I've got a cock well, like a gymnast hand. No, I couldn't I couldn't have written that. That was that was brilliant. Uh, I'll go through my my so it's not really a funny injury, but I think the mechanism of injury needs needs explaining. So um so mine was like a, a cracked rib. I never actually got it x-rayed. It could have been bruised, cracked, I don't know. But you can't really do anything about ribs, so I just left it. Um oh, I've had bruised ribs before. Shit, They're horrible because you can't laugh. No, I know. You can't breathe this. That's the only joy I get in life. <laughs> laughing at other people. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um so I'll explain a little bit of what happened. So basically, I think this was when I was like fifteen, just trying to find stupid ways to get adrenaline because I'm an idiot. Right, so the this top is, of our treehouse. How high is the top of our treehouse? Would you say? Thirty feet? Shit. Well, the top of it. Yeah, yeah, the roof. Nah, it's not 30 foot. 30 foot's quite high. That's 12 quite foot, high. 15 foot. Oh, okay, yeah, 30 feet. So at like the base yeah, of it, if you stand... Oh, like, yeah, shit, yeah. Because so like, I was smaller back then, it felt yeah, like... Yeah, I reckon it's like 15 foot. Okay, 15 feet, okay, cool. So what we'd done is we'd wheeled the trampoline underneath that. <laughs> yeah. And so we were jumping off originally the, just the, tr- the, the normal treehouse bit, so like a couple of feet. Yeah. Bouncing onto the trampoline, get an extra bounce, and then... I don't know, bouncing onto the floor or whatever. Um, and then I was like, oh, this, isn't, this isn't good enough. I need to, I need to expand this idea. Yeah, yeah. So I went on the went on the roof and took a run-up, jumped onto the trampoline. I then jumped, like, obviously bounced. And I, I was meant to bounce, I think, straight onto the floor. And I was, like, practicing parkour or something. So I was like, right. took a We roll. did go through a parkour yeah. stage, yeah, yeah, in yeah. fairness. So I was trying to do that. And so I misjudged it a little bit. And you know, if you've been on trampolines, like, they've got the springs around the edge. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're normally covered by a pad. Mm. Yeah, ours wasn't because it was like in, e- in need of maintenance. It was a gnarly trampoline on it. Yeah. yeah, so it was just it was just springs exposed, <laughs> and so like what happened? What happened was my my feet went straight through like one of the spring gaps. Ooh. My feet went straight through one of the spring gaps, and then the the bar that went around just yeah. clattered my rib. Ooh. Yeah, and I, and I was like, "Fuck, I ain't doing that again." So um, the, yeah, f- the physics of that are all off though, because you're on. coming onto the trampoline at an angle, aren't you? Well, no, I you kind of jumping straight. Down. No, no, you're jumping, jumping at an angle, then jumping forward off it. Right, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I just didn't make it far enough over to hit the ground. To hit the ground. But should I hit the, the middle ground? That's quite a... Right, yeah. I don't know I'm how just, I'm just failing to square away the actual benefit of this kind of... This endeavour? Endeavour, yeah, yeah. there was no benefit. <laughs> this is 15-year-old Harry bored on a summer holiday. Yeah, it's like, like chasing it. adrenaline. ADHD raging through your Absolutely. veins. Absolutely. Yeah, this is what I used to spend my time doing, just jumping off shit. Yeah. Uh, so don't do that, kids. So I broke my rib, yeah. And then, um, was it I, definitely broken? Because well, there's a fine line. Because yeah, it was painful as fuck. And it was a big clatter on, on a metal bar. I feel like when people get rib injuries, they never go... To, like, unless it's really, really bad. They never actually go to the hospital to get x-rayed. So if it's bruised, you might as well just say it's broken because no one's going to find True. out. But broken and cracked are a bit different, aren't they? It wasn't broken; it would have been cracked. Because broken, it, it, would, it would be like at a different level, and then it could like pierce a lung and shit. That that wasn't happening. Yeah, like, cracked is different. I think it might crack. There's different. a fine line between like bruised and cracked. I yeah, think. that is shit injury, though, isn't it? It's horrible. Yeah, I had it can't in last. Can't breathe. I had it at school because you can't really move because mm. it affects your entire diaphragm, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so okay. So there's really two very contrasting. Yeah, yeah sort of. Yeah, we'll look through. For audio listeners, the phone has been passed to me. Yes. Uh, it's a quick one for you. Yes or no? Do you ever wish you were still in the Marines? Uh, at times, yes. But then it, it's like that rose tinted glasses thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, because I look at what my mates are maybe doing now, and they're sometimes doing some cool shit. 
I'm like, that'd be pretty sick to get involved with. Um, but then I hear, I, I kind of hear the full story, and I'm like, ah, there's bits of that that I remember being shit. And obviously, the, what I do now I, provides me a lot of freedom, which I wouldn't have. Yeah, you used to, your social life used to be fucked. Oh, it was mental. Yeah. But it was any decent when you're on annual leave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, and even then, you still fucking like you what? pulled from pillar to post because you had to get all of your socialising in a yeah, like, two like, week window. You're like turbo socially, aren't you? Yeah, it's like, yeah, t- yeah. Two weeks or like a week, a weekend maybe. You haven't seen everyone for ages. So you're just and doing you're like, the, on you're just, overdrive. Yeah, you're back, just doing you're the just rounds. Everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a bit difficult. Um, but yeah, sometimes I do, and I actually do get a little bit like imposter syndrome sometimes. You know what I do now? I talked yeah. about this before, I think, with you. Um, what I do now is obviously coaching people with within the Marines and the military space, but I'm not a PTI in the Marines, right, in the military. Sometimes I wish I'd have stayed that extra bit to get that extra little bit of credibility. But then I think, I don't think it really matters. I, don't th- I feel like only people in your position value it. Do I feel that like makes sense? only fellow Marines would value it yeah. and that's not really important because I'm not really exactly marketing to them yeah so uh, it's just a little bit of an ego thing it's like the further down like one specific road you travel the higher your expectations aren't they yeah 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 true so like the fact that you were even like a boot neck to most people just trying to get in I get yeah yeah he's class you but because you were in you obviously look up to like the next PTI SF yeah. and all that yeah thing. and then yeah, like yeah. PTI's probably look up to SF yeah they feel like they're fraud there's always going to be something yeah exactly extra you could have done yeah but sometimes I do um, but then I, I kind of, kind of sh- check myself and um, figure out actually what I would have missed and versus what I'm experiencing now which is a lot more freedom a lot more free time doing what I actually like to do each day so yeah you've got yeah. a much better work life balance now yeah even though I work all the time right yeah I'm phone back so okay so the phone has now been passed uh, right so again if any of you root questions in right so this is my Instagram. I did say not fitness related. I didn't say shit. So, you know, height, question mark. Right, we can answer that quickly. Then. I'm 5'9". Yeah, and I'm 5'8". Right. On a good day. Yeah, <laughs> short short kings, mate. On a tour, though. Uh, that's why we did the podcast. If any fit birds answer. ask, I'm six foot. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, my Tinder profile doesn't say that. But, uh, <laughs> right. Oh, that's a shit question again. Right, okay. We'll do this one. So, get rid of one. Yeah. Snobs. So these are Birmingham nightclubs. Yeah, these we'll are explain no- some background as we go. Yeah, we'll, we'll do some nightclub admin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So snobs, roses, or prism. Right. So immediately I know the answer. Yeah, but, but, for, the do- of, but for the benefit, but for the benefit of the listener, we'll do it. We'll do our due diligence. Yeah, I might disagree. With you on it. If we got rid of one, I don't know. Um, so snobs is probably well, it's our most travelled one, isn't it? Like- yeah, historically it's the one that we've been to the most, but that's because when you're younger, you tend to circulate mm. towards snobs. Yeah, given it's so, vibe so it's like a it's the indie club isn't first, it first second year of uni students kind of deal yeah. it's indie music primarily um, and it's kind of where, we, where we've been most out of those three Roses how would you describe Roses yeah, Roses, like roses has got everywhere, isn't three it? different yeah so this is, this is so Snobs is an independent club yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas Roses and Prism are obviously chain nightclubs so the chances are you, you've been to a Roses or a Prism Roses is kind of offering the same thing as Prism, just on a smaller scale. There are different rooms to suit different genres and like vibes. Mm, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're doing. It's a big. It's a lot of shit. It's a lot, a lot, throwing a lot of shit at the wall, aren't they? Yeah, the Birmingham Roses is a bit fucking shit. I'll be honest. I've not had amazing experiences. I've only been once where I've had a good night. So I have an issue with these kind of like everything under one roof clubs yeah. because they try and offer everything. And they don't really deliver on but anything. But they don't deliver on anything, yeah. Exactly. It's like, like you're trying to do too much. Yeah, because... And it seems to be centred around um, R&B. It seems to be the... Because you know, like, there'll be like, I don't know, four rooms. And two of them will be R&B and one of them will be like EDM. Yeah, also like one of them will be like modern R&B or like chart music. Yeah, and then the other yeah, one yeah. will be like 90s R&B, like supposedly like old school. Yeah. Even though all the songs that have been played are only like 20 years old. It's not even that. Yeah, I can't get on board with that, to be honest. But I don't know, to be honest, I haven't been out, apart from to Albert Schloss, which again, there's a few across the country, I haven't been out to a, like, a nightclub vibe and had a really good time in, in a long time. Yeah, well, we're too old for nightclubs now, aren't we? Do you think? But, it's a bit sad, yeah. isn't it? Is it? I don't, it really, is I don't really miss it. No, I don't miss it, but it's sad that we're too old. <laughs> yeah, well, it's depressing. Well, yeah. see, the thing is, I don't know whether Prism and Roses are shit or just the people of Birmingham make them shit. Potentially. 
Because I've, I've not been to another prism in fairness. Uh, prism is a massive club. What, well, what it's you just get... stabby in Birmingham, isn't it? Prism. Yeah, a little bit. Well, I think well the fact that they have airport security at the door is a red flag, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think they do that everywhere in, in prison. Um, where are you getting rid of? Well, it's between Roses and Prism. Yeah. Because as Snobs much as it's got to stay, as much as I've had a shit time there, like the last couple of times we've been, it's, yeah. um, it's, it's got to stay just for historical reasons. Yeah, because it has served me well in the past. <laughs> Make of that what you will. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, like it, it's achieved what it set out to do, and I respect that. Yes, yeah, it has. Whereas I think, the, like, again, coming back to message discipline, what Roses and Prism are offering is convoluted. Yes, I'd agree. Do you feel what I mean? But it preys it preys on the fact that most groups of friends are all into different stuff. That's true. So you go there to appease everyone, but ultimately no one is satisfied. Yeah. Um I well because you then gotta split off in your friendship Which group, is shit, because the whole is, idea is you go out together. But yeah, and you wanna stay together. <laughs> which never inevitably never happens anyway. Um but yeah, I'd say just because on the virtue that I've been there least Rose is, is going. Right, okay. Would you, would you agree? Well, there's no love lost for either of them, really, with me. So. No, have you ever been to prison? Yeah, quite yeah. a few times. I feel like if prison's busy, it's good, but I've been now a couple of times where it's been shit. When it's, it's shit, really, it's really shit. Because it's massive. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Uh, so to either of them, I don't give a shit. Yeah, but Kill either s- of them. Snobs can stay, anyway. Right, I'm passing the phone again. Right. There's a lot more questions on that one. Oh... Take your pick. Right, we need, we do need to cover some of the ones you've already answered because they're stupid questions. So yeah, people need to perfect. be called out. Right? Yeah, so I've, I've answered a few of these on stories, but not obviously long form, so it'd be good. Right, we won't call anyone out, but mm. you'll know if you ask the question. Opinion on holidays? Yeah, come on. I mean, right, be be, be a bit more creative. Think, like, I'm not fucking David Goggins. I know. Do people think because you're always doing fizz that you're some kind of like monk? Yeah, probably. Who like just like sleeps eight hours a day, hydrates, gets your protein just, in. Does, does fears and that's yeah, it. just lives to inflict pain on himself. Yeah, like a sadomasochist or something. I think that's what happens. I think maybe I need to show more of um, me getting getting on the piss or something on my, on my socials. Yeah, well, I've got some opinions about that, but we'll share that for another time. Uh, <laughs> what? Showing you? Get, you no, know, I just I just saw some some notable gym influencer type people trying to delve into kind of like the uh, like Dave Trank. S- yeah, yeah, I saw sesh that, content. Yeah, yeah. and no, right. I learned, I learned, I learned two it. things from that. Firstly, right. he doesn't know how to send it. No. Right. Well, uh, they measure their alcohol. This was a, well, this yeah. was this right. He's that fucking is. atrocious behaviour. This, this need, he needs to be tried in the Hague for that. Yeah, this is that's like a can, cro- kangaroo court behaviour. This. That's so a, like that's a crime against the send, isn't it? So right. What so is he, he doing this for macro content or is he just alcohol? I'm not sure. I probably about. I guess macro. So he content. knows exactly that's how terrible. many calories he's consuming. Fuck Bro, you're going man. on the piss. You're gonna. You started the night with a pizza. You inevitably going to end the night with a kebab. Yeah, macro and you're out the window, measuring right? out your fucking vodka shots. You know how many calories you consume. And you're only at pre. So when you go out, what do you do? Ask for a scale at the bar. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, like on the TikTok though, we're literally they had a, they're measuring scales out. They put their shaker cup on the measuring scales, and then they're literally measuring out each bit of mixer they put in. It's like, what are you doing? Like you literally take mate, it. If they came to my pre and did that, I'd <laughs> fucking kick them out. Yeah. Like, you are not coming out and <laughs> fucking get away. Yeah. You it's like, oh, bring your own booze and your own weight scales. Yeah, 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 fucking, yeah. No one's ever said that before, have they? Yeah. Because they don't and, fucking and measure no out. one should. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, if, you, if you're ever tracking your macros, alcohol's, alcohol's a freebie. On that day, get your protein in. And then just fucking leave it. Right. Yeah, just don't assume matter. that it's all going to go a bit west yeah. when you get on the booze. Because you don't make rational decisions, do you? Because like, me and Rex are in decent nick, right? We've never no. tracked our alcohol. So do with that what you will. Anyway, yeah, exactly. Bit about it. Basically, we're hoofing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, do a different one because you obviously are too good. Right, this is the other one that we need to cover. Yeah. Tea or coffee? Yes, we do need to cover this. I had a little... DM DM war with someone like this. Yeah, because he wouldn't concede any ground, would he? Yeah, yeah. Even though he was fundamentally wrong. <laughs> and, we, and we'll now explain why. Yeah. So if you're listening, listening. Um, yeah, so tea or coffee, obviously we both think, we both agree on coffee. Coffee is ultimate ser- winner. It serves a concrete purpose. Yeah. Getting me through the fucking day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making life tolerable. Making me productive. Um, yeah, so tea serves absolutely no purpose other than I don't know for like my nan to get through a pension. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's more. How much tea do your fucking nan? Do your nan drink? My parents as well. 
Am I? Mate, the, like four, the, four the, every the, hour. The ritual of tea making pisses me off as well. <laughs> because, right, so <laughs> at face value, right, tea serves no purpose anyway. Yeah. But then the farce that people go through to craft it properly in their eyes yeah. just adds to the fucking so irrelevance of it. I think half of it as well, right, is just an Procra- excuse. It's procrastination. No, it's an excuse to have a biscuit. Right, yeah, right. So, all right, we can come at this from two angles. Yeah. So, there is that. Yeah. So, first, it's procrastination. Yeah. People go through about 10 cups of tea a day because it just means they can stop doing what they don't want to do. Yeah. So, so like, that's why people. It takes you like 10 minutes to make Yeah, because that's why. You know, yeah. You've got to brew it. I don't agree. Right, if we're going on a tangent here, oh, this okay. pisses me off. Yeah. Right. So, you know how, like, smokers get extra time off work to smoke? Yeah, that's bollocks. Even though bollocks. it's a self inflicted addiction. Yeah. Why do tea makers also get tea indefinite breaks. tea breaks? Yeah, that's true. So if, if you I could do that with coffee, but you'd just be fucking pinging off your tits, wouldn't you? Right. So if so say I'm <laughs> in an office, right, and like I'm addicted to fizz, right, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't just get up every twenty minutes and go and do a burpee on my outside, could I? Because that would be frowned upon, right? I bet you could. Do Equally, you ever, you ever ran it past your boss? <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, I could get up every twenty minutes and go make a brew. Yeah. Five minutes a time. Effectively, like. A th- like halving your productivity at work, really, yeah. Because you're spending it's, it's, half an hour every hour. But within the tea. realms of office culture, that's deemed socially acceptable. Yeah. Well, you, you could you could effectively you could get round. You could be quite savvy with it, really, couldn't you? Put the kettle like work out how long it takes to boil a yeah. kettle, and then do burpees for that amount of time or something. <laughs> yeah. And then and then not make the cup of tea. Yeah. For, for the person. Just who, just to sorry. prove a point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, we can say if you say tea is so yeah so that's one it's one avenue people getting un, undue time off work for for tea making and um, using it as procrastination. The other thing is people just want a biscuit. It's like almost unacceptable in their head to just have a biscuit. Yeah. Because it's a bit like well I know I'm being a fat cunt. Whereas if I make a tea and then I can dip my biscuit in the tea, it's not as bad. Yeah, somehow like they can like justify that with themselves, can't they? Yeah, and I people that people are smashed like mate. I used to be terrible for this so going back to your point about um, it being procrastination when I was behind the wire I had fuck all to do for like hours on end that's what I'll do so I'll go down make a cup of tea with like a massive heaped teaspoon of, sh- of um, honey in right nice I'll get that involved a massive cup of tea and then I would they, they used to have these biscuits they're in a black um, they're in a black case I can't remember what they're called I don't know but anyway they're just these massively overly sugared biscuits. I used to root through the packets that I found the um, the, uh, <laughs> the the chocolate orange ones. I used to get like four of the chocolate orange ones which used to be about 30 oh, grams of sugar fire. each. Right. And I used to get through them in my in my, uh, foxy in my tea. They were a bit the same. No, no, they weren't. Are they like not those like uh, deluxe biscuits? Not like... They were ones you get in like not like bag you... rations in the military. Oh, I think they are military biscuits. Not like your run of the mill like digestives. No, but they were really good. Um, and I used to fucking... Cane, yeah, cane, and, and I'd have like three cups of tea a day, four biscuits each time, <laughs> just so you could just fuck. so I could just do nothing, yeah. Um, and so yeah, you're linking back to your point. It's um, but, but this goes back to I my was guilty as well. This this is my approach with all fluids. I only consume fluids that serve a purpose. You only consume scram that serves a purpose. Yeah, well. I don't really do flavors. I'll be honest. Yeah, I'm, it's a bit weird. I'm a function that. kind of guy. Like yeah. Everything has to serve a purpose, right? So I drink water to stay hydrated. Yeah. Throw electrolytes in with that. Yeah. I drink coffee to stay caffeinated. Mm. I drink booze to get pissed. Nice. But people that drink booze because they like the taste. Well, we had this the last week in Underrated Overrated, didn't we? Did we? Uh, one of, no, two weeks ago. We have touched on this before. People that drink lager because they like it. Yeah. No, no one, one likes right. lager. It's like, so is that, that remind me of that Peep Show clip. Have you ever seen the Peep Show where, um, it, what's the date? Mark. Mark's character <laughs> goes there. Uh, he, has, he has beer. He's like, Oh yeah, that is nice. I mean, not really nice like Coca Cola or, or lemonade, but yeah, for a beer, it's nice. Yeah, it's a bit it's quite <laughs> dangerous. Like how similar I am to Mark Corrigan <laughs> yes, and yes. also Will McKenzie. That is, yeah, that's dangerous. That is. They don't shag like him. I mean, that's why. Got, <laughs> that's that's why he's got got callus. Uh, yeah, so like we said, tea, no purpose. Co- coffee, purpose, purpose. because it's ca- it's caffeinating. And the, his argument was, oh, it's bad for you. No, it isn't. It isn't. It is. Read the research. Exactly. It's antioxidants, right? Yeah. And it makes you more productive. If you have it... It's about it's about quantity well, it, it, and context, in the dose, isn't mate? it? Yeah. Devil's in the dose with everything. I mean, so you It's know, about how much you consume. A little, little bit of Coke. Brilliant. It's how, how much you consume and when you consume it. Yeah. If you're fucking 
having an espresso before you get to bed at midnight, you're you're obviously gonna fucking do yourself over, aren't you? Well, this is the other thing. Linking back to coffee, we could have a podcast on coffee, right? Link back to coffee. People have coffee with their dessert at dinner, right? Yeah, right. And I'm all, I'm all about here. the Mediterranean lifestyle, right? Yeah. I like the fucking diet. I like what it's about. Mm. Like you fucking work to live, not live to work. What I can't get on board with is their coffee culture. It's mental that. They have like espresso as well. They're yeah. like fucking time. And they pair like... coffee with fags as well, which is the worst pairing in culinary history. Yeah, yeah. Especially like 20 minutes before you're trying to shut your eyes to get to bed. Yeah. Uh, anyway, off the coffee, ta- coffee tangent. You're wrong if you think tea's better than coffee. Yes. Right, next question. Should we go some Brummy Brothers ones now? Yeah. Because we had some interesting ones. You have a look. You want to find that? Again, through there, because they're all a bit winkle pickery. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? We don't like winkle pickery questions. A bit questions. Nosy. Yeah. I haven't answered a few of these, though. Uh, right, Brummy Brothers. Uh, I can answer this one. Do you booze? Uh, yes, but occasionally. I booze on special occasions. Yeah, again, it's got to serve a purpose. Yeah. I don't just booze to the, like, the, the taste of it. Uh, what's your unrealistic dream job? This is good. Okay. Uh, example F1 driver definitely not refer to net last week's podcast yeah astronaut fighter pilot okay interesting so I run you through what I wanted to do as a young child yeah and I have this on good record my parents used to gob off about it all the time oh, I right so I wanted to be a lorry driver in the week right but but then I wanted to own a chip shop so on Friday after work I could call in and get free fish and chips that was your dream job that was genuinely my that's dr- the most northern thing <laughs> I've ever heard in that's my life. genuinely my dreams and ambitions up to the age of about six. That is insane. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, yeah, so I was expecting, you know, footballer, astronaut, you know, yeah. the normal ones. I wanted to be HGV driver. Do you want to see the driver. Driver. Who had a side hustle of yeah. fish and chip truck. Do you want to do 80 hours, 80 hours a week in a, in a truck, right? And then, <laughs> then own a business on the side. Yeah. Sounds pretty stress free, you know? Um, shock, I wanted to be a footballer. Specifically, Cristiano Ronaldo. I was going to say, um, I would. I would because I was going to throw you under the bus if you didn't. Yeah, you're obsessed with Ronaldo. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, to the point, right? So obviously Ronaldo's specialty was the step over, right? So, um, so I, I, used, I took this as gospel to the thought, nth degree. I thought, right, if I'm going to be Ronaldo, I've got to be class at step overs. So what I did was I set myself a fucking target every day. I had to get, I had to do 80 step overs on the like fucking as fast as I could. Really? I did that every day for ages. That's yeah. like that. Well, should we throw Key Brown on the bus here as well? Yeah. Because yeah, he used that. to like eat. <laughs> So, Key Brown of YouTube fame now, Kieran yeah. Brown, formerly Football Skills 98. Yeah. When he, he went through a stage of being like obsessed with like freestyling, didn't he? Yeah. And didn't he go through a point where like he'd have to do a certain amount of key puppies in a row before he'd come in on a night? Yeah, probably. That, that's a good little... That's that's not, like that. I quite like that. That is not bad. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't really align with like most like 10-year-old's values, does it? No, true. And I was the same. I was like, yeah, I've got to do 80, 80 step overs before I go, cool, I guess, go out or whatever. Um... But yeah, so mine was footballer for ages. And then I think, yeah, just... I then wanted to be in the military. And I wanted to be, like... Um, well, it wouldn't be Ant Middleton then. It would have been, like, Chris Ryan, you know. Yeah. Not yeah. SF. But Andy McNabb. Legend. Yeah, Andy <laughs> McNabb. So I was, I was consuming all of that, you know. I was, yeah, I was you obsessed set, with you that. set your sights on the military quite early doors. Yeah, like 13, 14. Yeah. Because, like, bearing in mind, like, I still don't really know what I want to do in life. Mm-hmm. True. Well, I um, I sort of cut my losses with football because I was, I was very average as a player, right? Um, I hadn't been picked up by any academies when I was, and I was like fit as a, you know, as a, I was always fit, but I'd never had like the technical skill to go, the extra bit, and then and so I was like, well, you know, gonna have to probably focus on something else here, and so, and so I looked at the military and then started delving into that and got interested in trying to be special forces, um, and thought I was going to do that, but yeah. Peter that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know about what what about now then? Because obviously we've done that we've done when we were a kid. But now. Let's do this. Let's do I this. I want to be James Smith. Okay. We both want to be James Smith. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. But think... effectively everything that we do in life is to reach a point where we emulate James Smith. Yeah. So let's run through that. So this is a good exercise actually. So Ollie March does this sometimes with his um his PFCA people, so like the people he works with as PTs. Yeah. So map out like your 
Actually, can I just ideal can, day? Can I just yeah. can I just take a minute to welcome Ollie March into my echo chamber? He's he's a new addition. Yeah, he's earned his way my, into my, this. And my echo chamber is so uh, selective that when people do gain entry, what? it's worth a shout out. It's, it's like when you well there. it's like when you get into SF. Yeah. you know what I mean. These he's, people he's badged. These people deserve recognition. <laughs> Ollie March has been badged. Yeah, it's not like you. You're ten a penny with oh, your echo yeah, chamber. You're like, like you're the I'm village like fridge. Yeah, you let him get in. You let anyone in. Yeah, literally. So congratulations, Ollie, because you had to graph for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to have fought. Yeah, I actually had to meet him first before I'd grant him entry. Everyone like Genuinely. That. Um, yes, so anyway, so he always um, goes through what was your like ideal work day look like? And so once you figure that out, you can kind of reverse engineer it and, and yeah, true. figure out what you want to so do. So like, long term, obviously, I want to be an online personal trainer, mm. the online coaching. Mm. But to the extent where I'm making a shitload of bank off it. So would you want to be? And I'd also like to be an author as well. So how free would you want to be with that though? Because obviously you can have, you can you can be an online coach, and make loads of money, but it normally means you've got to work mm. in the business quite a lot, you know. But it's like you've got to put the hard yards in, haven't you? And then you reach a point where like you can almost do it as like a labour of love, where like financially you're not dependent on it. But yeah. you keep doing it just because so it's like your passion. having employees that do it for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. you kind of establish a training team around you and then you can keep yourself dialed in because mm. you enjoy it. Yeah. But realistically, you're not financially dependent on it because you've got, you know, you've diversified your income stream. Mm. Okay, so what would a day look like? Uh, get up, probably uh, have a wank. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Scram some box. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, mate. Uh, yeah, go on, so... So, why? I, I, I don't know. Do I, wank? No, I'm yeah, yeah, get up, have a wank, have another wank, uh, have a shower, have a wank in the shower. <laughs> Both hands. Just grind some balls. Uh, I don't know. I like the ritual. This isn't to do with my dream thing. I just like the ritual of getting up and doing some fizz. The walk. Yeah, as long as that's in, I'm happy. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty low, mate. I see the thing is, like, I don't think we have really any exciting kind of my dream day. Hmm. It doesn't have to be because we we're know. both very kind of like simple people. We we find the simple things in life enjoyable. I really. find like taking care of like protecting my energy and protecting my health quite satisfying. Yeah, yeah, yeah same. Do you know what I mean? So like if I can protect my my energy so that I'm quite productive in the day, then I'm, I'm happy with so that. So we're not really drawn towards materialistic things, are we? No, I mean I'd like um, the only right. The only thing that I aspire to have that costs a lot of money, right, is a hot cold setup. Oh yeah, that is at the very top of my list. Almost. Over actually owning a house or having a house. Oh, you've got to have one first. Oh, yeah, I know. It's annoying. <laughs> just would, a random fucking hot cold. I would quite everything. happily just own a hut in the forest that was split in two. And on one side, there was a Gucci ice bath. Yeah. And on the other side, there was a sauna. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that is that is fairly high up in my um, in my sort of list of priorities when I eventually settle down and get somewhere right. But the, the um, I think, yeah, hot cold, in terms of like material stuff, hot cold thing... Um, I did write this out ages ago, but I can't like enough enough disposable income to like enjoy really good food because because now I spend but probably eighty yeah. percent of my outgoings are food and drink. Well, we both do, don't we? Yeah, and so if I could like upscale that, so I could have not worry about going out for a couple of meals a week and yeah, have yeah. decent food in and whatever, because that's a massive part again of protecting your health and well being, right? But again, I think compared to most people, ah. Uh, the bar that we'd have to set to reach that is a lot lower than a lot of others. Yeah, which is really good, right? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're only gonna we're, we're on to a winner there. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, obviously, I wouldn't be doing and putting in what I'm putting in now if I wasn't bothered about this being the end thing. So uh, I'd like to continue doing this, but I would like to be able to, like you say, step back a little bit and still work on helping people because I think there's satisfaction there. There's like you know, fulfillment there. So maybe still work one to one with a few people. But the people I've chosen to work with, which I kind of do now, um, and then have like the academy and stuff like that, that does feed me, yeah, not passive but more passive income, but that I still see result from. So like now the academy is great because it feeds in a decent amount, right? But there's not a huge amount of people in there. If there were more in there, it'd be be amazing. So what that does is I still get like the message from people who go, oh, I've just passed training or whatever, you know, I've just done this and this, that gives me that dopamine. The release. gratification, yeah. But I don't have to put in a hundred hours a week to make it work. Would you, you ever, would you ever write a book? Do you have any aspirations of writing a book? I haven't, I've like given it maybe like 1.2% thought, but I haven't really thought about it. I don't know what I'd write about. 
True. I, I, I really want to write a book, right? But I haven't really done anything notable. Maybe that's first. And I'm not a genius. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to focus on actually doing something yeah. notable first. It is, isn't it? I think there's too many people. And we were talking about this. But I don't want to write a book because I want everyone to read it and I want to be fucking like some kind of best saying author. Mm. I just like writing. Well, yeah. I you... find it easiest to articulate myself through writing. That's because you read a lot. Yeah, exactly. It's a truism, isn't it, that reading links into writing. But I think, um, well, you've either got to figure out like a fiction avenue you've got to go down, or I think you've got to figure out, okay, let's Adult do a loads of like, let's do loads of good shit lived experience wise, and then I can write about it. I'd want to write a non fiction book because I, I don't read fiction, do I? Yeah, so you've got to like have some lessons, do some shit. On a side note, though, I reckon I could write some fucking good adult fiction. Why don't you? Like, like porn. <laughs> that's what no, that's what adult fiction is, isn't it? <laughs> no, because I, I have a certain I have a certain way with words, right? Because you because you fucking watch so much of it. <laughs> no, but I like I just have like a very like unique vocabulary, don't I? Yeah, you do. And I think I can make it quite humorous. It's not there to be humorous, like. <laughs> People don't be laughing when they're halfway through a fucking. Knocking it's one a new out. genre. <laughs> <laughs> Comic Pop. adult adult. Yeah, porn. like right. Brilliant. Like a mix between like a Carry On film and Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> I can't wait to see this. I'll be the first, I'll be the proofreader. Or, fa- um, or fan fiction, Alan Partridge <laughs> fan fiction. Right, uh, so that's a bit of a niche. It's yeah. a bit of a niche market. Tell into Chat GPT so see what it spits out. Yeah, put it in the comments if you want. If you'd like some more of that. <laughs> um, right, right we'll do we'll have go a, another one. That was a good one. We'll have another Brummy Brothers mm. one because these are a bit more. Uh, ever thought about doing turf games? What's you know turf? what turf game is? No, it's just like a. Functional fitness competition. Same, I think it's CrossFit. Mm. It's quite high level, I believe. Um, um, well, then, no. Probably like Max Baggio kind of deal, I guess. Does it involve Olympic lifts? Probably would do, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not for me then. Yeah, not for Eddie. Not, again, not, not against it outright in of itself, but not for me. No, I have considered it, to be fair. I think it takes qualifying for... I just haven't really um, allocated the time and effort to, to go and put myself through one of those like qualifiers and then go into a big competition. I don't know. I'm a bit weird with competitions. I don't tend to do them a lot. I, I, like a lot of people would just, you know, they compete and then like, they have a competing season. They'll do it fucking like every week. I can't do that. Yeah, like their... It takes a lot of more. Their raison d'etre is competing, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas we do it for the love of the game. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm so, in it for the long haul. So like, we obviously went to Af- the Athex Games, the very first Athex Games mm. this weekend. And it's it was actually too. quite weird being in a competition environment because I never really apart from when I do like half marathons or marathons mm. that's as much exposure as I normally get to like fitness a competitive amazing. environment mm. within fitness yeah that's interesting isn't it it's not a bad thing it's just no. like I don't naturally how gravitate you, towards it how did you find that because like you say so you're normally involved with it from like a mar- like a running sex standpoint it's very yeah. different being in like a, a phys functional fitness sort of side of things what did you what did you think well, I'm naturally not a great runner, so I kind of feel like a bit of a fraud on race day. Yeah. Not a fraud, but you know what I mean? Like I'm I'm under no illusions that I'm not... You're not going to win, right? No, I'm not yeah, going to yeah, win. Yeah, okay, yeah. I feel a bit more comfortable in like a functional fitness competition environment because mm. I know I'm better at it. Because you know you can do it. You yeah. Know, it's kind of your more your domain, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it was a re- really good. I, I really enjoy those competitions. I think... I do probably need to push a little bit more to go to more of them because I think it is a really good day. It's just a lot of stress. Um, and I probably maybe like lean away from them just because it's yeah. maybe out of my comfort zone. But a lot of the time as well, this is the first real year that I've had <coughs> weekends free and stuff like that. So. Well, that's just, I'm, gonna, I'm yeah. not going to lie. Up until kind of earlier this year, I used to... Like, weekends were for boozing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So that's this true. Is, and like, so in the first half of this year was taken up with the marathon, mm. and then since then we've been kind of doing so many. We've been here, there, and everywhere. We've not had that kind of consistency or routine to work towards. Yeah, doing a competition. Yeah. It's like not been on our radar, has it really? No. I think so. The one I've been looking looking to do is High Rocks, which is later on this year, and probably Athex in um, in Liverpool, which would be good. I do I do an Athex, yeah, having yeah, now yeah. kind of. You've been through it. Exposed to it, yeah. And we got to, we got to run through it before the competition started, so... Mm. No, it'd be good. And then High Rocks as well is cool. Uh, but I think that's just a good event on the whole. It's supposed, supposedly it's well-run yeah. and stuff, so... I don't mind those kind of events, actually, because there's a lot of people all competing at the same time. So the spotlight's not on you. 
Yeah. You know, true. in the same way that kind of other competitions are run. Yeah. You know what, though? I've only ever done one individual CrossFit competition, right? Uh, this is when I was like in my heyday, I did CrossFit all the time. And I did really quite well. It was, it was the Royal Marines CrossFit Championships thing. Okay. And that was the only one I've done on my own. I came like fourth overall, which was decent. But like, I, I, I then said to myself, oh, I need to do more of these. I need to get out and do more yeah, individual yeah. ones. But it's just difficult because um, I feel like if you're not taking someone else with you, there's no, like, it's mm. all about you then, isn't it? It's so much easier to kind of commit to these kind of things if you've got a partner. Yes. Like, I wouldn't have done the marathon if you hadn't done it with no, me. No, exactly. Yeah, it was ma- massive that we got. I signed up to the Edinburgh Marathon last year. Yeah, and I, I just chinned that off because I was doing it on my own. It's so I had no one to hold myself accountable. Yeah, that's a massive, massive point. Especially like through the training process and actually going to the event itself as well. But we're, we're quite difficult. disciplined as well. Yeah. Because you have to go so far down kind of the marathon road to do a marathon. Hmm. Unless yeah. you've got someone there with you, it's just you wait. Pro- you'll probably do a U turn. Yeah, you'll probably do a U turn, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So, but, yeah, I haven't really looked into specifically the turf games, but um, I am probably going to get more into competing because it's cool. Right, this is a good, this could take up the rest of the podcast theoretically because <laughs> I feel like we we can both overshare on this. Okay. Most unforgettable holiday experiences, good or bad? Oh shit! So ba- basically, I hadn't ho- prepared for that holiday dit. Uh, do we want to do ones where we're together? That's probably easier, isn't it? <sighs> we could do both because I've got some good ones from Napa last year. Okay, you do Napa and I'll do Zanti when we went. <laughs> uh, which one? Well, I don't know. I see this. I could quite easily overshare here. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's <laughs> we're all friends. That's what we're about. Yeah. Uh, well, about that time, I nearly got filled in by loads of Celtic fans. Yeah. Did I tell you about that? Yeah, you did. When yeah, I was yeah, a yeah. kind of what? What was it? What's that? What's the word? Uh, what? Sectarianism. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <laughs> this was a uh, this was towards. So I did ten nights all inclusive in Iron Apple last year, which is very on brand for me when, I was, when I was a piss camp. Yeah. yeah. I was in a state. Yeah. In fact, I've got a bad photo of me on. The last breakfast before we went home after that holiday, and I looked broke, and we'll put it in. Yeah, I'll sorry. send it to you. Yeah. I looked like on edge. I, I was a broken man. Right, okay. So this is like the second to last night where I basically just lost my head, <laughs> and I got. I think I got kicked out of a club called Car Wash. If you know, if you've been to Iron Happy, you'll know before. So like they have a policy where girls can dance on tables, but blokes can't. So uh, not not liking bouncers as it is. Yeah, and you'll understand if you're a regular listener. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I decided to ignore that policy and proceed to dance on tables, right? So I was I can't remember this at all. This is what Joe Dudley told me. So the bouncers like so like the tables were high as well. So say they're like chest height. Mm. The bouncers instead of kind of like just gently getting me down because they'd lost patience with me, got me at the ankles and just pulled me horizontally. Oh shit. Pulled me horizontally. Pulled the floor from under you. Yeah, yeah, literally, like just swept my feet. Mm. So apparently, I just went like sideways off this table and yeah. got thrown out. Yeah. So they all stayed in there. Actually, I think I think Joe came out with me initially, and then I was like, "Oh fuck it, leave me alone. I'm gonna go back to the hotel." So this is it, like this is pretty early doors because mm. like ten days of drinking had, had seen me off effectively, it's ca- catching up to you. Yeah. So apparently, I don't know what happened in like the few hours between this, but. Eventually, that the lads caught up with me, and I was in the process of goading loads of Celtic fans with sectarian chants. Right. So I was. I can so, imagine this. So I don't support Rangers, and I have, I have no real kind of opinion mm. on the the Catholicism like Protestantism yeah, 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 yeah. debate. But for some reason, because I was pissed, and I had a retro Rangers shirt on. I decided to, to uh, what's what is the chant? It's the. Uh, oh, I know what you mean. I don't know though. It's, it's um, the when when I no when I was young. Oh, yeah. I had no sense. I bought a flute for fifty pence. Are the you only, chanting this at the, right, right? The only oh, let me do it justice. Okay. The only tune that I could play was "Fuck the Pope" and the IRA. Right. I was bellowing this on my on my own at about three in the morning. That's terrible. At a group yeah. of a good ten or twelve Celtic fans. That's brave. That is. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's not my finest hour. Yeah, it's, and and the only reason I didn't get filled in is because the lads happened to just stumble across me. Fucking hell! So apparently you, I was you. You could not be it. Oh, yeah, I think they would have killed me. Yeah, like they they, they had, marching they, towards they you. They fully like, the, 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 like the, the lads fully had to intervene like to stop me basically getting <laughs> kicked to death. Yeah, I can't imagine you in that state fending off many Celtic fans either. 
<laughs> I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't fight off a fucking <laughs> pre jiu jitsu as well. Yeah, well, exactly. I'm black belt now. We get, we get I'm, I'm still yet to do a class. But... <laughs> yeah. So that's probably like, that's a bit of a hairy. Yeah, that is a. I'm not very. It's lucky that. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty yeah, good. Like, that's, well, that's yeah. like, that's an advertisement not to do 10 nights all inclusive in Iron Apple. Yeah. Well. Seven is more than enough. I think four is is the gold now. To be honest, yeah. four's decent. I, I like four. But um, um, yeah. I've got some more. I've got some funnier ones. That got a bit dark then. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not anti Catholic either. By the way, I was just four. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think I don't know if I spun this on the travels and opportunity thing podcast we did. But anyway, I'll spin it again. So Vegas. Uh, I mean, you know, as you can imagine, pretty loose. Right, our first night in Vegas, right, we set out like, an absolute black and white rule we're not to go to strip clubs right? <laughs> we are not to go to strip clubs because we knew the Vegas strip you know was was infamous yeah for strip clubs well like. we've all seen the hangover haven't we yeah exactly so we're like right we don't want that we want like normal clubs with normal girls when we're fucking going to drop game right that was that was, that was have that you was, told me this story before maybe I don't know I don't right know. okay well, well just proceed yeah bit. okay we'll see start as um, you need to go <laughs> yeah so anyway after about five minutes after taking this you know, hard stance yeah, against, it's, it's, strip, gone, it's, strip it's gone out the window, hasn't it? Pretty much, right? So this this black, I don't know, blacked out like um, coupe, I don't know, like coupe car had rocked up, and this geezer like pitbull, pitbull like, right? Had yeah. Come out. This worldwide's come fucking. It slid slid open the sliding door, right? And he had this bottle of Chiroc and a bottle of Jaeger in his hand. He said, lads. Get in here, and we'll get you some. We we'll get you like a, another two bottles of these, and then we'll we'll get on it when we get on the way to the right. the club. Right. So he's a strip club rep. Yeah. And you know that. And we didn't realise that because we were <laughs> pissed and and had just rocked up in in uh, Las Vegas and we were just pre drinked and we said, like, oh fucking hell, free booze and we're going straight to the, the club, which he said the club. Right. Sign me, yeah. yeah <laughs> right I was like, like, sign me right up for that. He's that a great sale. Like he's a great salesman there because he's not specified what type of club. Yeah, and he's done that deliberately. Fantastic, he's done yeah. that before, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so we we get in the blacked out, you know, cab or whatever it was. We start bevving, uh, and then before we, I don't know how long the uh, the journey was, but it wasn't wasn't short. And so we went like completely around the houses to get to this horrendous fucking strip club. Anyway, this quite it turns it turns quite um quite savage this story. Uh, so, so, well, they've both gone dark. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's completely different to yours. So we get into this strip club. And we're like, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. We're here now. We're we're probably miles away from the strip where every other normal place was, normal casino or club. So we're like, fuck it. We might as well try and have a decent night. So you imagine there's like, I think there's like six marines in there, mm. and as soon as we got in there, we're then like split. And so like, no, you know. So there was a couple of us sat around one of the. Um, dancing platforms, right? Yeah, uh, and then one looking, of the, looking at the art on the wall. One of the, <laughs> yeah. enjoy, enjoying the scenery. One of the lads thinned out upstairs, like, right? To bag off. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, and so, um, and then <laughs> this is so savage, right? So I'm out of myself here. So I, um, I, I then <laughs> I took a liking to one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've gone to court one of the workers. Yeah. I took a liking to one of the birds, right? And she obviously, you know, she's on a payroll. She took a liking to me as well. Because yeah, that's weird, that, isn't it? I know. They're only quite standoff in a yeah, strip club. Yeah, they like, are. Yeah, they normally don't like um, they're like male attention. But anyway, she seemed to really like me, so I was happy like, like, with that. <laughs> yeah, and yeah my, don't look too much into that. Yeah, actually. and my blood alcohol level was obviously at a point where I thought, you yeah, know, this could be this could be the one. Yeah, the yeah. weed. I found her. <laughs> right. Anyway, the weed. <laughs> Basically, uh, I was effectively grafting a stripper for a few hours and my card got fucking absolutely rinsed because she kept going I don't know you know buy me a drink or whatever and that drink would be like 50 quid and half that would be a hourly rate right? mm. anyway and so my, my card kept getting bounced and then that was like all my cash gone and or, you know when you, your normal bank goes and then you have to start like it backfilling from your yeah, yeah that's never a good so I was on, on the app trying to do that so embarrassing when you have to do yeah. that innit? and then, decline mate yeah, yeah. and then you just stood there like that for five minutes <laughs> yeah. while everything else the world freezes around you while you're just you're like tra- waving trying just, to- just transfer money across <laughs> that you can't afford yeah. and then they were like oh, your car, car machine's gone down there's a um, there's a cash machine around the corner so I went around the corner got the cash machine I was like okay 200 quid whatever 200 dollars got, got it out 
and it wouldn't come out of the machine. I was like, fuck. And I had to go and tell my missus, my new missus, right, that, that I couldn't afford her company for the next few hours. Uh, and I thought, <laughs> you backed off at this point. No. That is shit. This is the last time I went into the Yeah, this is the shit. Yeah, anyway. Anyway, uh, so I hadn't got the money out. I went out, went back with a towel between my legs, cock between my legs, and um, and informed the stripper that I now could no longer pay for a company. And Last so week, then I, I thinned out. Uh, well, got thinned out by by by, <laughs> by, 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 by <laughs> Yeah, that's why because she sounded like she really liked you as well. Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm surprised that she's so keen on the money. Yeah, I think the um, the balance has stepped in. To be honest, I don't think it was her decision. Um, yeah, yeah, you but, tell yourself that. Like, yeah, she wanted. I promise she wanted me. Yeah. Anyway, in the morning after that, because uh, I was like, "Why is my fucking card not working? This is weird." And so, I hadn't I, like you do. You have no idea how much you're spending. I spent so much money. Uh, and in, in the morning, I was trying to get like a hard rock cafe or something. I was trying to, you know, mm. pay for my 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 dinner. And my card still wasn't working. I was like, this is shit. So I rang my bank, and they were like, "Oh yeah, we um." We cancelled your card last night because you were spending about a hundred pound every thirty minutes at a place called Sophia's at two a.m. in the morning. I was like, Sophia's, and I Google Sophia's strip club. Right, I was like, brilliant, right, right brilliant. <laughs> so, uh, so I spent like four best part of four hundred pounds in this place, Fuck. and then they they'd cut my cards. I was like, no, that was that was me. I didn't have my cards stolen, like. You know, I, I was in this fucking seedy strip club in Vegas spending all my money. So yeah. Um, that was. It's not that. It's, it's, it's not left me in a, in a great light. But I bet you can. Well, you can figure out. <laughs> not only have we not painted ourselves in a great light with these opening two dits. Yeah. We've not painted alcohol in a great light, have we? That's very true. Yeah, because both of these both of these were inebriated. I'm happy to say mine was because that'd be horrendous. Or so, wouldn't it? Do you want to throw uh, yourself under the bus with that Hooters story? Is that? Hooters. Was it Hooters? Which one? That other one. Wait, where? Uh, right. I'll, I'll, I'll try and ref- <laughs> I'll try and refresh your memory without giving the story away, and without right. giving too much detail in right. case you don't want to share. Right, okay. Right, okay. The one right. So you didn't cover this when we talked about the travelling and lifting the lid, but then you told me off camera. Oh. Where, <laughs> nah. Is that too much? Yeah. Right. Okay. We'll tease them with that then. That was <laughs> only because there's other people involved. Yeah. yeah uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except David Brent knows here. Yeah, we can't we can't have that one. Anyway, yeah, is there another one on the Brummy Brothers? Yeah, right, okay, have so you look. get one dit each because otherwise they get a bit too loose. Yeah, yeah. Uh another Marines based one. Do you regret not staying in the Marines? We've kind of same, covered that other Same we? question really, isn't it? You're probably the same bloke. <laughs> uh another Winkle picker. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, here we go. Uh we've got to cover this one. So this one just says, and it's spelt wrong, and the the text language is terrible. But anyway, um, BRT three three one seven seven wants to know: Are you a Tory or lame? Right. Let's unpack, so I assume let's unpack he, that. Does it, so he can either can't spell Labour, or he's tried to be funny and suggest that if you do support Labour, you're lame. Yeah. Which in the current climate is yeah. bold at best isn't right, it right so this is probably going to go on a bit of a tangent so let's let's say that this is the last one because we've still got to okay, get through cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've still got to get through underrated overrated yeah, and reasons yeah, to be yeah. cheerful so right. we'll, we'll finish on a good one fine right is he really suggesting that in 2023 you really want to be associating yourself with the Conservative Party well so strongly that yeah that well. you've called out the only other feasible opposition as lame yeah I mean because I don't know why this this would I don't know why you'd assume this Maybe, so I answered another question earlier in the day that was like, oh yeah, I agree with the military pay rise, but I don't agree with how it's being done. Yeah. So that's probably what sparked it, I would guess. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Because um, because obviously that was a Tory initiative that that gave them that and and took the money from where where it was took. So yeah, I think that's what sparked it. So I think he's coming at it from that angle. Uh, And it's phenomenal considering, you know, the level of ignorance... Right, so I'll, I'll try and answer this as comprehensively but as concisely as I can. Right. So I come from a staunchly Labour family. Mm. I myself, I'm a centrist. Mm. I don't. I'm not a member or officially affiliated with any political party mm. because I don't. I don't like to put all my eggs in one basket. But I am also at the same time firmly not a Tory. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we can. To the extent where part of my personality is. Me telling people I'm not a Tory. It's true. It's very true. Uh, so in that regard, I am 
much more closely aligned with Labour and their values. Yeah, I feel like Labour today, definitely, because when they were under Jeremy Corbyn, I feel like it was a bit Well, they took a drastic shift to the left, didn't they? Yeah, they've that's gone... what alienated people. That's why now we've got... But they've gone, they've gone more new Labour now. They've gone more Tony Blair Labour. Yeah, and I'm all about that. Because my that. spiritual king, Alistair Campbell, was his director of communication. So. <laughs> yeah, so, yes, we are lame, if that makes us uh, lame. So, yeah, just, it's, I'm not a Tory, uh, and neither are you. So, yeah, we can answer that. So, yeah. if, you, if you don't like the fact that we're not a Tory, then please unfollow us. Yeah, I, don't... I feel like we could have a little bit of a, a disconnect here with, with the listeners, because obviously a lot of them come from wanting to be in the military and that you know you, you get that correlation don't you between the Tories look after the military and the, the defence budget the Labour have been associated with ah, taking right. from that sometimes but right I'll, this is pertinent mm. but piece of news that I came across earlier mm. that that uh, that guy that's serving in the RAF who is a, who is a migrant mm. who is still paying for his NHS care there you go yeah, are they really? Are they really looking after? No, they're not. The military, of course, they're not. But I mean, that's always the narrative, isn't it? They're not looking after anything at the fucking moment. Uh, so, yeah, they're not actually. Other than lining their own pockets, they're not actually benefiting anyone. No, this is the other thing I've said to you before as well. So, t- traditionally, like the upper class of society would be Tory, yeah, because they think it's best for them. But I think Tories really now, anyway, are best for the ultra rich, not like the upper class in society, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like. The, the, you know, the top 0.1%, they're lying in their pockets. They're not worried about people earning like 200 grand a year, 150 grand a year, which is are the kind of people who definitely vote Tory. Yeah. But I feel like there's there's the, a little bit of mis, misunderstanding there. I think people... There is. And I think obviously like people of a military background are more, more closely affiliated or align themselves more closely with right-wing politics, mm. which obviously... Typically. If you to generalise, is more closely associated with the Tory party. Mm. But I think you're right. At this current moment in time, because the Tory party is kind of so fractured and on this weird kind of ultra right wing. I don't like, really know what you could. It's just it's kind it of like as... just in self destruct, isn't it? Yeah, they're not even looking out for a lot of their core voters. No, I, I get well to round this off. I don't know how in 2023 you can be yeah associated with the Tories. Anyway. Uh, Enough of the politics. Let's get on yeah, to. Yeah, that was, was going to get a. Uh, yeah, let's get on to. Um, I'm going to cut transgressed into it. Our it. next, our next segment. Cue the jingle now. It's either underrated. You've charmed me. Or it's overrated. Well, that was fucking dreadful. Don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I'm fucking. You're a genius. I am. Yeah. I am a genius. The, the, these jingles are fantastic. I hope you're yeah. enjoying them. I mean, we haven't paid for me either. I've fucking made these with out, blood, sweat, and blind. tears. Yeah. I haven't paid some hat on Fiverr to make them. Yeah, but you will be. We'll be but, but I will, yeah. So if, if anyone is in the market for a jingle, then at me. <laughs> yeah, you'll be on Fiverr. Yeah, anyway. Right, underrated, overrated. You're gonna go first. You wanna go first or shall I? Uh, you go first. Right, okay. Beaches. Ooh, but to be more specific, okay. sandy beaches. Where in Zimana? Just in general. Okay. The thing, right? This is my well, issue. I, right? I think I think they're fairly rated. But in in theory, right? Beaches are class. Yeah. But I, I, my I, I issue, get, get m- my from. issue comes from the fact that they never deliver in reality. Okay. They always seem better than they actually are. So like, you mm. never account for the fact that as soon as you go on a beach. With anything, all of your items that you then take off the beach yeah. will be fucking covered in sand cool. and will follow you around for the duration of your day slash holiday. Yeah, I do feel like this comes under your you know, your beach admin though. Because if your beach admin's good enough... Bro, are you actually going to give me admin advice? Yeah. Toilet boy admin? No, I, I, I'm, <laughs> good, I'm, I'm not saying I'm good at this, but I'm saying if your admin is super... Like if you're a, a, a regular beach goer and you've got mm. your admin squared away where you've got a massive like towel or rug or whatever picnic blanket to fucking line everything on and then you don't get any sand on you then it's perfect um i i like it because of the proximity to the sea because i mean if you get too hot somebody straight in the sea back in love that um and it's just it's like a, a kind of relaxing place to be because you get the sound of the ocean i quite like that but that's um right see i think in right go on. in your head that's how you envisage a beach right but in reality 
beaches are never like that because they're always rammed. So you've always got some screaming toddler in your ear. Mm. You're always getting berated by Lucky Lucky Man <laughs> trying to sell you like cocktails yeah, or yeah, fucking yeah. Ray Bettys. Yeah, yeah, true. I mean, I get it, equally, depends where you are, to be fair. Yeah, but I mean, like, who finds that like secluded like cove where like you've got a beach yeah, to yourself? I think I've been spoiled because I, you know, the last kind of beach I was at was in like Thailand, and they are yeah, pretty it's fucking true. Idyllic, idyllic. But if you take your average kind of like beach on like the Costa oh, del yeah, Sol or yeah. something, or like the, but like, you remember we went to Barcelona Beach mm. and it was fucking carnage. Yeah, I, I know. I get where you're coming from here a little bit, and uh, I know you'd be you, you were expecting me to be against me. But the other point of, to my argument yeah. is. I think like the swimming pool kind of all inclusive bar hotel it set up is better. Is way better. I can get on board with that, I think. I think it's what it's what you want to get out of your holiday. Mm. I primarily want to read and then get pissed. Yeah, okay, fair enough. So it's easier for me to lie around by the pool and then I can fucking take a dip when I want mm. and not get covered in sand. Yeah, I, and then you know, read and then the proximity to the all-inclusive bar is also a winner. Yeah, I'm not against that to be honest, but I do like, um, I do like a beach just because of like, I think the comfort of it. Because obviously, lying on sand, not on a fucking shit sun lounge or whatever. Yeah, I, I like to tan. You don't like to tan. Yeah, see, this that's, is that's the disconnect yeah, a little yeah. bit there, isn't there? Um, you can tan by a pool. You can tan by a pool. I, no, I don't think there's much in it between the two. Mm. To be honest, I think if you've got like a beach with a good restaurant a good bar then i'm happy that's that's good cool. that's good if you've got like a massively busy beach with every where everything's miles away that is shit yeah but, if, you, if your hotel's miles away from the beach as well yeah that, the walk back from the beach to the hotel is dark yeah the win that is dark it the only win that i can think of really that's going to be that's massively different is between the two what we just mentioned is the scenery because like like somewhere like, even like Bournemouth Beach is essence like it's mm. fucking it's lovely to like to be be in and look at and that kind of thing. Well, you don't get that at by Paul. I think yeah. I just I think the the issue here is most people's kind of vision of a beach is very different to the reality of a beach. No, I, it's a bit I, like I agree com- with that. Beach is a bit like communism. <laughs> you know, that's it's, not, that's it's, not a, a, it's a great principle in theory. That's not a comparison to you every day. It's, it's a great principle in theory, but it never fulfills in reality. Yeah, I know, I get what you mean. People probably ham it up a little bit more than it, it delivers. Uh, the other thing I'll say is, and this is true for pretty much everything on holiday, it's massively overpriced. Bali's beaches are hugely overrated. If you're um, if you're on Bali's mainland, they're, they're pretty shit, uh, you know, as beaches go. Unless you really want to, unless you're really crazy about surfing, then they're obviously really good. Uh, the island off Bali's essence, but yeah, the mainland beach on Bali, where you where you would imagine it's like unbelievable shit. Yeah, because it's all dirty and horrible. Anyway, I would go in the middle there. Right, so fairly you, rated. So you're gonna say rated? Yeah, I'm gonna say overrated. Okay, I would say rated, not under, not over, but yeah, I'm in the middle there. Okay, go okay. on, your turn. Right, you're gonna love this. Right, <laughs> right. under right, right. American things. St- not even fucking overrated. Like they shouldn't even be considered in the debate because they're just void. So right, I should qualify this. When I when I say American things, right, I mean like country music, American food, um, like big range, big big rangers. You know, like obnoxious, enthusiastic bartenders. I love it. Right, anyway, go on. That's right. what I'm on about. Like steaks, burgers. So to un- yeah, to un- yeah. to understand my perspective on America, you need to appreciate that I am incredibly British. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. So I am naturally the antithesis of most American things. As in, I'm not massively obnoxious. I'm not terribly enthusiastic. I'm not kind of. It's got to be bigger, better, faster, stronger. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you, where well, your chimp loves that, doesn't yeah. he? He's fucking well on board. My chimp is American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You've always liked American things, though. Yeah, I love it. I think I don't know. I just love. I love the idea, like opposite of what you. I love the idea that everything's got to be bigger and better. I love the um, the culture of you, you get the culture of kind of building each other up more than you do in Britain. In Britain, it's very like tall poppy syndrome. Someone's doing well. They want you to kind of do well, but not really not too well. You know. Yeah. American people seem to like gas each other up a little but more. I think, like. I think that's quite vacuous and hollow. I know you think it's it's, it's, it's not disingenuous, genuine, but I think that's just. Because I think Britain, British people often feel like that about Americans, but I think it's because we can't imagine being like that. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like true. hot, hot, cold empathy gap, this, isn't it? This is right. There's a really good book by John Sopel, who mm. used to be the BBC's North America correspondent, called "If Only They Didn't Speak English." Right. And the whole premise of the book is that if Americans didn't speak English, we wouldn't think we were so closely culturally aligned. I agree. Because with that. we we are vastly different culturally. We actually have far more in common with Europeans. But because we don't speak the same language, we don't think that. I would agree. I would agree with that. But I would say, and this is this is also like I'm cherry picking here. Like I'm massively cherry picking the American things I like because there are a lot of American things I fucking massively disagree with. But I do like, like I like fucking shooting guns. You know all this kind of yeah. I can get a book rock ho mad like, shit. They do. I like it's great. I like country music. Yeah, get on board with that. Mm. I like shooting things. Yeah, I don't agree with. No, I don't a lot of their gun, the gun laws, laws. I don't agree and the way with that, that they well. handle firearms. Yeah. I can get on board with shooting things. Like, who doesn't like shooting things? Blowing shit up. All yeah. that like, gung-ho, mad shit that Americans I can't are. get on board with a religion. No, I feel with like their they're just a little bit behind us. It's quite, it, like, I know that America's basically like a continent masquerading as a country. As a country. Yeah. But like certain parts of the US, I think, are really quite backwards yeah. in, in terms of their kind of general outlook on life but again I think they're just like behind us a couple like a couple of decades yeah because we were like that yeah you, you know we were massive I, I think I could get on in like the eastern seaboard you know like the kind of like Boston Massachusetts yeah 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 I think yeah. I could live there I couldn't live a bit more I couldn't live in the bottom is it cosmopolitan I guess? yeah cosmopolitan yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and, and obviously like historically like there was a lot of kind of European immigration, immigration to those areas in so the state so there's European, still like yeah. a distinct Irish community in like places like Boston and stuff, and I'm, yeah. you know, basically <laughs> I, I'm basically Celtic in all but actual geography, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, but um, no, I, I just think from my exposure to America, I really really like it. Just the bigger and better. I'm always, you know, like always. You're the, you're an eternal it. optimist. I'm an eternal pessimist. That's true. This is why we balance each other out. It's quite good. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm obviously gonna say. I think again, it depends who you ask, but I would say rate it because I rate it. I would say, but like, oh. for, from for your perspective, I would say your perspective is that like it's underrated for you because you don't rate it, <laughs> but you think it's massively overrated, though. No, I think it's so like it's more nuanced than just overrated, underrated. But for the sake of argument, I'll say overrated. American things are overrated. Okay, cool. We got you. Uh, and again, I'm cherry picking there because there are some terrible bits about America. There are some well. terrible. It's, it's so it's such a big place. It's hard to generalise, isn't it? But like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. stereotypically, well, we, we'll 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 come back to that. We need to cover. We're gonna do gun control. I think. We do need to do gun control because it's yeah. the elephant in the room, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot to talk about there. Um, I would like to get someone on, but we won't be able to get him on because we've got to travel to America. But anyway, there's um, a gun control expert in the UK that we can get. Anyway, this is a conversation for off the podcast. Yes. If so, any of you out there are US gun control <laughs> experts, then get, please get in touch because yeah, we, we we'll would like to cover it. Uh, yes. So it's time for our final segment of the day. Q soundbite now. Reasons to be cheerful. <laughs> introduce us to reasons to be cheerful yes so reasons to be cheerful today is spawned off the back of our weekend we just had basically seeing all this sort of stuff but it's effectively like elderly people so we're talking like 50 plus right 50 plus getting involved getting stuck in with fitness competing yeah not not letting their age be a limiting factor in their fitness yeah so we saw this in it in, in all its glory yesterday so this, we've, we've always admired kind of uh, people that are a bit older that are still smashing fizz, yeah. but this kind of like reignited our kind of admiration for it, didn't it? Yeah, I think it was. So it was a pairs competition. So I think it was like there was some father son, son, yeah, like, yeah. Um, and he was like sixty. I'm thinking something like that. he was. He was up there. The thing is, right, because he's in such good nick, he could quite easily be older. But for argument's sake, let's say he was like sixty. Yeah, the bloke had abs, mate. And he was he was jacked. Like he'd he'd still got a considerable amount of muscle mass. Yeah. He was lean as fuck. Yeah. And he's obviously still got a decent engine on him because he was sending through that. He was sending that endurance event. Yeah. And so, bear in mind, like once you pass thirty, if you don't train, you're like you're losing muscle mass every decade, uh, like an alarming rate, and it compounds over time. 
to get to like that age and still be that jacked is hugely impressive. Well, that tells you a lot about that individual, doesn't yeah, it? Because exactly. it basically means he's consistently performed at that level for how many decades? Yeah, exactly. Because you have that's what it is. It's like a it's a calling card to how you've lived your life. Yeah, in it. It's not like you're when you're a young whippersnapper and you know with like a few months consistent training, you can just get a decent rigging order. Mm. Like as you said, after thirty, effectively you start to depreciate depreciate in, asset. Yeah, in physical value yeah. so the fact that he squared that away and stayed on top of it and it yeah. wasn't just him like in general no there's loads and, and this is when we you know when we go to endurance bits like uh, marathons and stuff there's a lot like yeah. it's ten a penny there I love, not I, so much though with the muscle mass side of things but with the capability of uh, these old people I love unreal. getting like say if I'm doing a half marathon or something I love getting smoked by like a 60 year old woman Woman, yeah, fantastic. yeah, because I've got nothing but respect for that. Yeah, oh, that's fucking unreal, isn't it? Like, you've like, got to you just because, like, it can be a bit humbling, obviously. But we're like, we're in decent nick, and, and this person's smoking us, and they're like, they, they have no right to be in that. Yeah, you've just got a condition, you, a lot, yeah, like you said, obviously, it's at, at face value, it's quite humbling. But then, if you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, you've just got to take your hat off. Yeah, because, like, like you say, like, like that, that level of physical performance is just a a window into how that person has lived the last 40 years of their life or the last 30 years of their life whatever yeah because you, you can't can't fluke that no like no one can get to 60 having just like you know live like a normal person maybe well, abuse, played sport once a abuse week abuse their body and get to the ability to be able to complete that affix event yeah fucking no chance and that fills me with confidence yeah because I'm 25 now and I feel like I'm on the scrappy yeah and I, it just gives me faith knowing that I keep working at it. There is some longevity there. Well, I'm in it for the long haul. Yeah, exactly. I'm all about longevity. We are. Um, You'll be like that bloke who like tries to optimise every aspect of his life to live yeah, to 100. I think that's what that's going to be. That's my <laughs> next person. Patrick show. Bateman vibes. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, I can't remember. He's weirdo. He's like a fucking psychopath. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking, yeah. He's mental. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's massively inspiring anyway to see these, these people. And it, competing obviously is is something that even like young people, like I was saying for myself before, young people shy away from. Yeah. So to be able to be that age and still smashing it. Putting is, a good is, shift is as well. Uh, and it means as well, you've got an extra little avenue to set up, to, to go down with your kid. Yes. Like, so when you're, um, so this is off a tangent a bit, but when your kid's like, you know, 17, 18, you haven't got much in common with your dad at that no. age, have you? you know, nothing really. Yeah, your values aren't really aligned. Either. No, so... To, to have something that's going to effectively like bring you together for a day and have you like suffer together for a day is going to fucking bring you closer. It's going yeah, to be mad class. for, for your, your relationship. So um, for, for your kid's sake, if you're an old old elderly man listening, um, then, then uh, get yourself get yourself in some nick and you can compete with your, with your, with your nipper. Yeah. yeah. But no excuses, effectively. Yeah, and we have been inspired this weekend, haven't we? Yeah, we have. We're uh, feeling very... I've been a bit more... Bit a bit more chipper than usual, I feel, on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as dour and bitter as I usually am. Which is a shock. Which I'm sure, like we I'm said sure. at the start, we've uh, just spent that like, three hours doing admin. Yeah, we need some fresh air now. And, yeah, I, need, and I need a piss, so let's get this wrapped up. Yeah, cool. So that was our Q&A episode uh, with all of the glorious jingles that went with it. Um, and obviously, obviously, to be fair, I'm sure we'll do another one of these in the future. So even if we don't explicitly put out a thing asking for questions, feel free to just ask us a question. You know, yeah, yeah, so like we'll DM us or comment us, and then we'll accumulate them. And then when we get to our next Q and A episode, we'll have kind of like a treasure trove to draw from. Yeah, because I thought we answered like. Yeah, this is, this was only like two days worth of yeah, yeah. questions, wasn't it? Really, we didn't so. even go through them all. So yeah, um, but yes. So that's it. That's this episode. What's wrapped up? What's coming up next week? What's next? Oh yeah, the seminar um, round up, isn't it? So yeah, so we're going to do a bit of a seminar day recap slash. We shall delve into. The antics, the de- yeah. the debauchery of the send afterwards. Yeah, because we are, we now haven't sent it for like four weeks. Yeah, so, so it, inev- the inevitably it will go a bit west. It's gonna go south. But um, yeah, so look forward to that. It'll be actually a week in advance, but don't worry about the timeline. Next week will be the seminar roundup. Thanks for listening to this one, and we'll see you next time.